Next we have Mr. Imran Roshan. Mr. Imran Roshan will be speaking to us about container security for enterprise Kubernetes environments. He is passionate about information security and cyber security and holds experience in architectural security, control process implementation, DevSecOps and compliance. Please welcome Mr. Imran Roshan. Not audible. Uh, now audible, right? Yeah. So, uh, my name is Imran. I currently work in the field of risk advisory consultancy as a senior consultant in the field of cyber cloud, specializing in Google Cloud and Kubernetes security. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, basically an uh, introduction of myself. Yeah. Who am I? Uh, I still consider myself a researcher. So my roots are in research. I'm a PCSE, Professional Cloud Security Engineer. These are some of my certifications. Uh, certified Ethical Hacker. I am very keen in the field of DevSecOps. Uh, the last two points, uh, the second last point, ease and laziness. The main reason why I like to automate things, right? Just because I'm lazy, wow. Okay, cool, yeah. So yeah, uh, roots and research. Uh, the image is not here, but yeah. We just, so let's start securing. So we'll build a baseline, okay. So uh, first, uh, let me just ask this question. How many, uh, how many students here? Engineers, right? Okay, uh, what sounds more interesting? Risk analysis on a Google Cloud environment or hacking into a Facebook account? Second one, right? That sounds more interesting. That is the reason why we are choosing cybersecurity. People choose ethical hacking for unethical reasons. I started hacking after a breakup. So yeah, we'll build a base, uh, microservices. So what's, so everyone remembers COVID here, right? Everyone is a college student, uh, even if you're not a college student, you remember COVID and uh, the examinations during COVID where you told your friend, tu ye wala chapter pad, main ye wala padunga, dono ek saath mast. Right. So that is what microservices do. Right. You have a bigger application, say for example, Zomato, right? Or any food delivery application. Cart is a separate microservice. Uh, you know, food menu is a different microservice. Map is a different microservice. All of those come together to form a bigger application, as simple as that. So what does it provide you with? Deployment independence, scalability, agility, reusability. So it makes your app more resilient to frequent changes, right? Similar to micro front ends comes a new concept called, I mean, similar to microservices comes a new concept called micro front ends, right? It's more soothing for the developers because it's, it's a testing approach, okay? Uh, more than an architectural approach, it's a testing approach because it is segregating your front ends as a different module. So it makes front end developers a little bit more eased out, a little bit more focused on their particular module and so on. Just remember this much of information, we'll use it in later slides. With great power comes greater security risks in microservices. Library scrutiny and build independence, segmentation and segregation, authentication and zero trust. I know that makes no sense. We will make sense out of it in the next slides. The K threat model. Wow. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, you guys know this guy? Yeah, it's not from Mr. Robot, but Mr. Robot is one of my favorites. Yeah, so external attackers, the main, so we are talking about the Kubernetes threat model, right? So whenever we are doing something like risk analysis, we are doing something like an approach to security, the threat model is the first thing that we go to. The first person that comes in the threat model are external attackers, the people who are hacking into a system, as per se. So people who have access to the cluster and all of the services running on them. It can be an external guy who has gained access to your system. It can be an employee that has left the organization because he is terrified from the boss. Okay, So a disgruntled employee. What are the security controls that we can implement regarding that? Ensure that management services like APIs are authenticated, role-based access management, API server authentication. So 
brownie points to anyone who can tell me what is the first thing or what is the base thing that I can use in order to authenticate an API in identity and access management. No, no. Something called service accounts. Right? So yeah, that's just that's, that's a brownie point. And kubelet authentication as well. The KAS threat model, one, one of my favorite memes once again, anyone that watches friends will relate. Yeah. So containers and machines, so this is the container paradox, right? Each and every microservice is a container, right? A container has an operating system, an operating system has vulnerabilities. A container is a machine and machine has vulnerabilities. So we need to ensure that all management ports are visible on the cluster network that require authentication. Ensure that service accounts are either not mounted in containers. So you have to keep it as secrets. That is the reason that we use something like secrets manager or we use something like a key store, right? So it does not have to be packaged with your application. It can be stored somewhere else as well in order to provide security for the container paradox. And there is more to this. HCD is basically the, you know, blueprint of what the container looks like, the state of the container, the, uh, you know, runtime, the pods and things like that, details about that. Although rare, not many case studies based on HCD being hacked, but never zero. So what do we do in this case? We use something called a client certificate authentication. The KHS threat model, lost keys. <laughs> right? So keys are being lost as well, right? What are, what are these keys that I'm talking about? Are those keys to doors, something, keys to something else? What are, the, what are those keys? Anyone, you know, having an idea? API keys, okay. So API keys can be a key to another service, can be a key for authentication to another service. It, there are a lot of reasons why we can use keys. And th those keys, when lost, create a lot of hassle. So, ensure that RBAC policies are in place for all users, providing least privilege access, so no one can access those keys, those who are not supposed to. Ensure that port security policies are in place, right, in order for you to restrict privileges for people that might be able to access your keys that are not supposed to be accessed. So uh, this is something that uh, is based out of the Meter Attack framework, right? But it's more suitable for containerized environment. It contains, uh, so you can Google search the uh, Kubernetes threat matrix and you'll get this in Google images, first image, right? So it has a lot of, uh, I am sure that it might not be visible from that end, but it contains a lot of vulnerabilities that you can look onto. And this is what we refer to when we are doing something like risk analysis, like cloud credentials being used, compromises to images in registry, application vulnerabilities, right? Even applications vulnerabilities, uh, you know, poses a threat to your entire microservice architecture. So that's a lot of things to do and I'll leave it up to you just a Google search away that you can refer to it. Let's secure, oh wow, I forgot to delete this, nice, cool. <coughs> so where security lies, right? So during the development phase, there might be things like vulnerable imports. Right? So uh, a, a, anyone doing import something something as something something in Python or import java.util.star, right? You guys are aware about that? Anyone not aware about that? No? Fine. So in recent studies or if you go on to recent case studies about PyPy being used by hackers, there are exploits that are packaged into these vulnerable imports and released on the official PyPy channel itself. And people are actually importing that in order to do some functionalities and getting affected by security flaws. Another uh, development feature is insecure assembly because nowadays we are not coding, right? We are assembling. We are taking this from here, we are taking this functionality from here, this from ChatGPT, this from GitHub and assembling an application. So. We don't know that if that code that I have scanned or if that code that I have imported it has any vulnerabilities in it or not. 
During testing phase, just the you know usual, the functionality tests and the secrets test. During pre-deployment, there are base image vulnerabilities. So we'll discuss about base image vulnerabilities, just keep that point in mind, as well as versioning. Post-deployment, I am an access, who are the things that, are, who are the people or who are the applications that are accessing your other microservices and so on. And the typical stuff, post-deployment, functionality testing and so on. And future is monitoring. You need to monitor about what are the whereabouts in your application. The base, right? The root of all evils for microservices in a Kubernetes environment, right? So there are container images. Is, is it sharing from my screen or is it sharing from your end? From your end, right? Okay, cool. Fine. So uh, I won't be able to show this demo, right? Oh, yeah, even for the time constraint. But this is the base. The base is a operating system at the end of the day, right? You are importing it from somewhere. You know, for example, Docker Hub. So those might contain vulnerabilities as well, right? So each and every container image my, and file system, Git repository, and the Kubernetes cluster might be affected with the vulnerabilities that come packaged with this base OS. That is the reason why we have a tool called Trivi, right? So you can uh, you know scan this QR code. You will get a GitHub repository. It's open source. We use open source because we don't have money to buy paid software. Yeah. So cool. So. Uh, app get installed Trivi and it's going to give you a detailed list of what are the vulnerabilities in a base image. Just try using the codes and the instructions that are given on the GitHub repository. Story time, very tragic story. Uh, how many of you uh, college students once again? How many of you went through a breakup? <laughs> this is the story of my breakup. Okay. One fine day, uh, I had this very weird friend, okay, I won't tell his name, I won't tell Zohan's name because it's for privacy reasons, right? So one fine day, I had a girlfriend, right? This Zohan watches uh, my girlfriend with someone else somewhere, right? Zohan is my college mate. He has two ways to communicate with me. One is my WhatsApp DM and one is the official of a uh, college WhatsApp group. Where does he decide to text me? The official WhatsApp group, because that's more secure, obviously. Huh? <laughs> right. So yeah, he texts me in the WhatsApp group. And you know the circumstances. I'll leave the imagination up to you. Now we'll take this example and we'll understand it from two points. One from network point, one from access point. Right. WhatsApp has encrypted chat. Right. Once it enters a group, that chat is not encrypted anymore for all of the users, right? Everyone is seeing that chat. When it comes to your DM, it's encrypted. It comes to you, it decrypts, and it's only visible to you because you are that person who is viewing that message. Same for Kubernetes in some way, right? You have a cluster. The cluster has an ingestion point, a gateway, and things like that. The gateway is secured perfectly. Right? It has, you know, an active connection, it has, you know, IP restrictions, it has a lot of, you know, access management and things like that. But inside of the cluster, the pods are communicating via HTTP or even worse, plain text. Right? So that is the reason why something like service mesh comes into play. I'm sure there is a session on service mesh and that is the reason I will breeze through this entire point and I won't go in depth. So it's, it's called Istio. There's a presentation on Istio later to this. So basically what happens is I am a service, right? Say I am a person that is driving a car and I have another person sitting beside me who is giving me the directions, right? So it makes matters more easier. Same thing for this. Istio D is basically the component that needs to be configured saying that you have to guide my pods in a way that they communicate via encrypted channels. And the Envoy proxies that you see as sidecar containers to my existing container give you the entire thing. So what I need to configure is just Istio D, 
okay envoys are configured automatically so this is basically the scenario that's istio d and that's envoy proxy right so oh wow right on time so how many of you know this guy ah straw hats nice so yeah this is the reason why i chose cyber security one of the quotes that uh, drives me and i want to share it with you all as well if that old man tells me anything i will quit being a pirate if it's a boring adventure i don't want to do it hence cyber security new vulnerabilities every day new threats every day new hacks every day no one tells you about it it's an interesting field and no one is going to guide you through it hence cyber security let's connect right uh, a better name for this slide is if you have taken any pictures of me send it to me on these links right uh, follow me here and uh, uh, the slides will also be shared on my medium as well and uh, thank you so much that was it and you've been a great audience thank you sir for your wonderful session uh, now i will uh, request uh, mr fazan akhtar to please felicitate our speaker.